Jones, how are you? I'd like to uh, do a little presentation of what's new here at the Crestron. Welcome to the dark side of the Crestron booth. Notice our black motif around here, uh, different from the rest of the uh, booth. Uh, we're here at the uh, Infocom 2016 show to introduce the new Avia Crestron DSP. And a lot of you are probably thinking, well, why on earth is another company introducing yet another DSP? And uh, one of the reasons might be, well, we hired a guy from the audio industry, we gotta keep him busy, but that's probably not a really good idea <laughs> and a reason alone to go do it. Uh, what we have done is we looked at the installation of DSPs, the deployment of them, Excuse me. We looked at. Hello, hello, hello. We looked at how DSPs were deployed, uh, integrated into systems, commissioned, and we found that there were a number of things that could be done better, uh, and some problems that could be fixed. And with an idea and a look towards uh, increasing the workflow and decreasing the time to do all of these things, uh, we identified six problems. And we have solutions to those. So let's look at those uh, particular issues that we talked about. First of all, DSPs are generally hard to program unless you've been doing it for a long time. But in general, it takes somebody with some audio experience to do so. To, to create touchscreen user interfaces uh, can be tedious. Uh, you have to collect up a couple of with parameters for each DSP control that you want to have over to UI, cut and paste it into some other application, make sure you get it into the right spot, and so on. We've got an easier solution than that that we're deploying with our new DSP. We also have uh, noticed that acoustic room tuning uh, requires some audio expertise. Some people can overlook it altogether. Uh, or perhaps get into a little more trouble than they ought by thinking that they can go do it anyway. Fourth thing that we looked at is I.O. expansion. We have a 12 in 8 out DSP, a standard configuration, and to increase I.O. count you add more boxes. So we've got a method for doing that as well as for SIP and POTS and, and VoIP uh, expansion. Also in bigger systems, it's difficult to integrate to um, larger systems. And also when using various manufacturer systems, it can be difficult to do that integration. Of course, you know what I'm going to say is, don't use other manufacturer's equipment, use Crestron. And uh, we have a little bit more than that to talk about when we get there. Lastly, audio performance can vary. Um, and largely that's a, a function of when the product came out. Semiconductor manufacturers uh, add more performance, better specs along the way. This is a new box we're using very modern converters and so on. So let's take a look at how we tried to fix that. First of all, the DSP are hard to program. What we have done is, for the configuration issue, come up with a method where you can quickly program the DSPs using DSP channel strips. The channel strip concept is borrowed from mixing consoles and recording consoles where every input has a strip of controls to do the equalization, limiters, maybe gates, auxiliary sends and the like. And so we extended that to signal processing and a commercial signal processor. So here we see part of a new tool. We see that uh, input channel strips here are for every single microphone. We got filters and compressors and delays and the like. And the channel strips, they are over here. So if I had a, created a channel strip for, say, a Shure microphone, MX396, with the EQ and limiter and such set for a particular application, maybe it's something I always put one in the center of the conference table, I save that channel strip, and any time I'm using that microphone in that situation, I drag it here, and the types of processing and the parameters for that particular situation are programmed to that strip. So over time, you build up collections of your oftentimes used microphones, speakers, um, line in and line out devices, and you use that collection of channel strips to increase the workflow and decrease the time to do a job. We'll also see that we have channel strips that we provide you for our own speakers as speaker profiles, and that will help in the acoustic tune that we'll see just in a few minutes. The second thing that I talked about was it's tedious or difficult to set up user interfaces, touch screen design. So we have a method to easily connect and create 
So many of you know all about VT Pro and how we take controls, put them on a compose screen. What you see here is what you get when you send that file to the touch panel. The unique part for us and what makes it easy is that previously mentioned cut and paste two parameters over to a control and do it a thousand times now becomes highlight the controls that you want to be available to the touch panel. In this case, the left and right level for the presentation speakers here and their VUs drag those over to an export area. When you do that, the audio guide names it. This is the level control for left and right, so you might level left, level right, VU left, VU right. These are exported as a file to VT Pro. They show up here individually with the tags for where they were and the label that you gave them. So the audio guy provides the resources, the UI designer uses them and puts them on the panel. Over here on the panel then, the address and the parameters and all the IDs are already associated with it and that control talks directly to the DSP box. What could probably take three to four hours to do a really nice panel design could probably be done in a half hour or so. The third item that we talked about was acoustic tuning might require some expertise. So to address the tune issue, we have an onboard spectrum analyzer and custom EQs within speaker profiles. Take a look again at the tool. Here are the um, channel strips that we provide for our commercial Saros speaker line that we have some uh, models over here. If I had a Saros IC8, an 8 inch in ceiling speaker, that was connected to an amplifier that was connected to channel 3 or 2, I would drag that channel strip over to here. Then our factory EQs, our speaker protection, and all of that are now implemented for that channel and you're halfway home to equalizing the room. The other part of it is that we have an onboard spectrum analyzer. So to tune the rest of that room with the other EQ, this one might have the speaker EQs in it and that would be used for the rooms. I open up that EQ. The spectrum analyzer can take as an input any of the 12 microphone inputs. So I put a reference mic on the table, route that to the spectrum analyzer, and display it here. If I send pink noise through the channel strip to the output, then I'm looking at the pink noise frequency response of that system. I see a dip here, I can boost that, I see a cut there, I can, et cetera. So it allows somebody with a little bit of audio training to get within a dB or so of a well-tuned room and quickly. Don't have to set up extra equipment, do this, get pretty close, move on to the next room. The fourth issue is expansion can be cumbersome. Well, we have Dante-enabled models, uh, as do others. It's kind of the standard. Uh, de facto standard. Also, we have voice over IP, plain old telephone systems, and USB outs and ins on various models to allow for connectivity in a wide range of uh, means. USB allows us to go out to codecs like our uh, unified communications uh, Skype for business model or to a laptop for courtroom recording. Dante to strap models together and also interface to other manufacturers like the microphone manufacturers, Dante enabled, etc. And then VoIP or phone line outs, uh, basically for audio conferencing, we have a codec right in the, some of our devices. <coughs> Integration with larger systems is an issue, and so of course our response to that is native uh, Crestron enterprise connectivity. We can manage the entire a universe of a Crestron product system, and that is shown here. DSPs talking to control systems, which is the heart of that uh, integration, as well as Fusion Cloud for monitoring of status, and so on. So these DSPs are integrated within our new multi-channel amplifier line that I'll talk about in a minute. Integrated with touch screens in that same Crestron universe by way of the UI export. Integrated with our Skype for Business products by the USB interconnection and also the uh, connection to Fusion Cloud. And also, as you might know, we have some new Dante blades uh, for DM. And so we can interconnect with Dante, something that's, uh, I think, a first for the industry. We have our DM video capabilities now with digital audio out onto the network to our new DSPs and back and forth. The last item is the performance issue, basically varying audio quality over time. And we're using recording grade mic preamps that are newly out, uh, differential line drivers, 
A to D's and D to A's to give world-class audio service. So these are our answers to the six problems that we identified and it's really why we got into this business and how we dealt with it. Most of these are taken care of with our new DSP tool which is demonstrated behind you. And uh, please talk with Matt or Mitch or Paul or myself, and we can give you a run through on those. Let's take a look at the products themselves. They're being displayed over here on the right. There are various models, five of them, with various echo canceller, VoIP, POT, SIP, and so on capabilities. These are the five models. The base unit is a 12 in, 8 out analog mic line. The top of the line has both Dante and AEC. Echo canceller models also have USB, they also have uh, plain old telephone system output, and they also have VoIP. So anytime you got AEC, you got all that other interconnectivity, not separate models. Uh, then the 1282 has only the AEC functions. The uh, 1281 has Dante only, back to the base unit, and then we have a low I.O. count model, the 860, for smaller jobs at a lesser price. The DSP tool, as we've seen along the way now, has been reimagined. Um, the top level system view lets you look at all the DSPs that are on the network. And if you want to look at the health of the operation of the system in terms of signals in and signals out and why aren't things getting through different DSPs, this is the view to look at. You click on any given DSP, it shows the VUs in and the VUs out. So if I don't have an output on channel 2, let's say, I can just look at this DSP. I know that that DSP is working with this particular speaker that's not on. Oh, and I see that all of those outputs have been muted. I click in here and unmute, and now I'm back in business. If something is distorted, I can look at that input channel, see that it might be overloading the A to D, go right here, turn down the mic pre, off we go. Maybe someone put a microphone that needs a phantom supply in there and they didn't turn it on. I can see that it's not on and click it. So we're working with signals in and out of the system and a quick way to view that for all the DSPs. And by the way, all the new multi-channel amplifiers also show up in here to complete that package. The next portion of the tool shows the input and output channel strips where you can make your own up and drag them in and out or use ours for our speakers. We'll also probably do a number of tunings for us um, for various microphone manufacturers and so on just as a convenience. Um, but this shows the overall structure of the tool. Uh, input channel strips mixed to outputs or mixed to internal signal processing so you can do various different kinds of processing on different mixes and then combine them back out. And we also offer all the same uh, kinds of DSP objects that you'd expect. A bunch of different compressors, limiters, automatic gain controls, uh, gates, auto mixers, duckers, different kinds of filters and EQs, uh, echo cancelers, and so on. There are a couple new other product lines that we have coming up, and they're shown over here. The so first is a product line of multi-channel amplifiers, styled like the DSP. Uh, these eight channel amplifiers have one model 75 watts for each channel and another 150 watt per channel amplifier. There is no signal processing in these. These are analog only. We over the network control uh, level, mute, and can monitor status back to the cloud, back to fusion, etc. Um, each amplifier's channel is individually switchable from low impedance to 70 volt constant voltage kinds of applications. So if I had a stereo left and right speaker on this display and some overhead speakers that are 70 volt constant, two channels would drive the low impedance guys, the third channel set to 70 volt, drive it and off we go. There's also some new, other new amplifier products, the modular or utility amplifiers. They are one U high there are several models that are half a rack wide and others that are a quarter rack wide and you can mix and match those like this. Let's say back to that scenario of stereo speakers around the display. I use this two channel, 25 watt per channel amplifier, low Z to drive those. We have another model that is 50 watt, 70 volt out to drive the overhead in ceiling speakers. You combine those slide them together, add the half space rack here, and now we've created that one U wide standard rack device. 
Each amplifier comes with a half wide and a quarter wide rack ear. And when you get to the end, you just turn it this way. And now you've done that bit. Also, each amplifier comes with two rails to surface mount this under tables, in credenzas, and the like. There's two models in the quarter wide format. Two channels at 25 low Z, like I just showed you. One channel at 50 watts low Z. The quarter wides are basically 50 watt power packages. The half wide versions are 200 watt power packages. And we have a model with two channels from low Z at 100 watts. Two channels, 100 watts, 70 volt distributed. Or a single 200 watt version as well. These are all bare bones amplifiers. AC in, speaker out. Two kinds of analog in, balanced or unbalanced. And the unbalanced connectors uh, are pin for pin for the line outs from the DMPS 300 family and also from the Skype for Business RL family. We have two new loudspeakers. They are a new addition to the Saros line. These are the low cost commodity speakers that you send on a job by the pallet full doing hotels and convention centers and the like. Uh, it competes directly with the market leaders in those two uh, categories. We also have a new sound bar powered uh, with, again, balanced and unbalanced inputs for the same reason. Easy analog interface to RL and to uh, DM. And that is the, <laughs> the story on the new uh, Crestron audio line. If you have any questions, we have uh, Matt and Mitch back here who are demonstrating uh, the tool. We have the amplifiers on this side, the DSPs on that side, and we'd all be happy to talk to you and answer any questions. Thanks a lot.